Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of the Beef Apple Podcast. This is episode 95, to be exact. And in this episode, we're going to explore the powerful combination of focus and action as tools and strategies for creating that thriving business and purposeful life that we're all striving for, right? So for entrepreneurs, leaders, and women in sports, <laughs> that's the core of our listeners here that make up the Beef Apple community but whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you do on the daily, whatever your purpose is, I'm glad you're tuning in. So for any of you that are aiming to leave a legacy and make an impact, implementing these elements of focus and action isn't just beneficial. It is essential. Without focus, action will be misguided. Without action, focus is merely a dream that you have not yet set into reality. So understanding how to harness both focus and action are going to set the stage for the transformation that you seek to define success on your terms. So friends, again, this is episode 95, where we're going to talk about focus and action, the dynamic duo for transformation. A few weeks ago, I got, you know, half a dozen texts or so asking about transformation. I had some listeners that tuned in that are looking to transition from the job that they have into starting their own business and some that are looking to make a career change and some that are just looking for a boost, but it's really a transformation. They're always on the journey to become the best version of yourself. That's the premise of, of what I do, empowering you to really tune in, to be authentically yourself and to get better every single day, 1% better than you were yesterday. That's one of the things that I always strive for and encourage, but transformation However it is you want to describe that word, however it is that you feel it's impacting you, I decided that let's talk a little bit about focus and action. So we're going to start off about exactly what is the symbolization focus and action? Like, what does it really mean, especially as we talk about transformation or as it's related to moving forward in a career, moving forward with a project, moving forward with making changes in your business? But, you know, moving forward and maybe moving literally somewhere else. You're going from this place to another and you're on that path in between. And you might feel stuck. You might feel that you just can't figure out the next steps. You're like in limbo. And this is where I remind you, friends, that if you're okay with where you are and you are finding joy and happiness for the first time or you have been for a long time, friends, celebrate being planted where your feet are. Celebrate now. Not all of us are looking to the next biggest thing. All of us are not looking to go from here to there on a skyrocket, right? All of us are not reaching for an additional goal. We have our goals, we've met them, and we're okay and we're happy. We all don't need to be chasing something, but I encourage you that if if you are going after something, let's use focus and action to make whatever it is that you're striving to make, to do, let's put it into action. Let's focus our attention on it. Let's give our energy to it so that you can find success in it, however you determine that. So in today's fast-paced world, achieving success regardless of what you do on the daily, regardless of the career you call yourself or you give yourself, the title you give yourself, whether it's in business or you're in a leadership role or you're one of the many, many friends and clients of mine that are working in women's sports up in the offices, down on the fields, actually playing in the games. It demands more than just good strategy and hard work. You all know you put blood, sweat, and tears in, right? It requires a harmonious blend of focus and action. So let's explore a little bit how you can establish a robust focus action cycle that will ensure that every step you take is both deliberate and informed. How do you go about establishing a robust focus action cycle? It's a dynamic framework that will help you not only set clear goals, but to actually execute them effectively, to actually work on them, to see them become reality. So let's let's go over some ways to establish this cycle. Some of them are going to be repetitive. Some of them are going to be common sense. Others, you might not have thought about all the way, or you are going to look at them differently. So as always, open heart, open mind. We're all about learning here. We're all about, again, trying to become 1% better than we were yesterday for ourselves first and then in order for us to serve others. So you need to define clear objectives. I really want you to start by defining what it is that you want to achieve. 
even if it's the most crazy thing in the world, what is it? Even if it's something that everybody's told you you can't do and that negative voice in your head says you'll never be able to do that, what is it? What is it that you want to achieve? These objectives should be specific, measurable, and tied directly with your broader goals, the bigger picture, right? We're going to start small and we're going to work up to the big project. But sometimes if we have the big project and the clear picture, we can reverse it. We can find out the steps that's going to take to get there in a more effective manner. Clear objectives keep you focused sharp and will provide that benchmark against where you can measure the actions that you're taking so that you can see, okay, this one action I'm getting some traction on. This one action is showing me results. This one action I'm taking isn't really getting me anywhere. And actually, it's causing me to go backwards. So you want to be clear on where you want to go. And then we're going to work on the path to get there. So that's it. Developing a strategic action plan. Once you know what you want to achieve and you have got some smaller goals in place, because friends, it's easier to take big, broad pictures, the unbelievable, the impossible, and break it down into smaller chunks so we can work on them bit by bit, piece by piece, piece step by step. So once you have these goals set, now outline the steps needed to achieve them. Is it going to take more equipment? Is it going to take hiring a staff? What's the big things that you need to write down that might be more of an investment? Put that down and then let's go to the next step. How can we get to that portion? How can we work up to finding an investment? How can we work up to having extra funds to have a team? How can we work to find an additional source or tools or tech or something that we need? So this will include timelines and the resources required, and then nailing down those specific tasks to accomplish each one of the goals. Each element of your plan should align directly with your objectives and ensuring that your actions that you're going to be taking are actually purposeful, that they're going to have an impact, that you will see results of them. As I mentioned, good results, bad results, but you're going to see that by taking action, you will see results. Then I want you to execute with precision. Now, execute's a strong word in this world that we live in. I probably should say that less often, but I want you to then attack, probably not another good word either, right? But words matter, and so I'm trying to be cautious and careful here. Bottom line is, you need to go after them. You need to have precision. You need to be clear on the actions as much as you are on the path. So with your plan in place, I want you to, to really look at these actions and, and dive in deep and look closely, be detailed about it. This means being fully present and committed to each of these tasks, ensuring that each action that you take, each action that you perform, you're going to do it to the best of your ability with the intention that you're going to get the results that you desire. Then I want you to moderate and adjust. When you regularly check in and moderate your, pro your progress, it really is crucial to see that the steps that are working. A lot of times we don't want to start something because we think, oh my gosh, all the work that's going to go into it. I don't have the time. I don't have the commitment. I don't have this, this, and it's all that negative excuses that we don't want to start something. And then if we do take action on something, we kind of think they just want action and we put the action out there. We set and forget it. You have to keep working the action. It's like when you get in your car, you have to get in your car, sit down, put your seatbelt on, turn the car on. Then you have to hit the gas pedal. Just because there's gas in the car does not mean it's going to drive by itself. You have to do other actions to get the car going. So you need to think of it this way. Monitor and adjust these things. You can't just check off the list. I worked out, oh, Bobby, I did what you told me to do. I did what you, I heard you say on your podcast so many times. I believe in myself. I got my mindset set. Here's the goal that I desire. Here's the goal that, that you tell me I'm worthy of, that you tell me I deserve. And then I'm going to do one or two things and nothing happens. You can't just check off. I set my goals. I set my desires. I'm going to do these four things. You have to actively do those four things. And by now, any of you that are in the entrepreneur world know that it takes more than four tasks to do anything, right? But you have to also evaluate the effectiveness of each of the actions. Will these actions will get closer to your goals? What impact has each action had? So when you make that list and you're working towards that, 
that bigger picture and that bigger goal. These actions are step by step by step. Every step you go up gets you closer to that goal. Sometimes a step goes backwards. It's time to readjust and take a look. And as you gather the data on how effective your actions are, be prepared to innovate and realign and come up with something different. Many times entrepreneurs and, and people that come to me from some, for some uh, consulting often ask me, you know, I just, I just can't figure out that if this is the path that I'm on, I'm not getting where I want to go. I, I'm, I'm on this path and I just don't seem to be getting anywhere. As you grow and as your business grow, friends, your goals are going to change. At the beginning of this episode, I ask you to really set down and, and write down your objectives. What it is you desire? Where do you want to see yourself? Where do you see yourself in a month, two months? Be that bigger picture. And then we're going to work on getting there. But sometimes the actions that you take are things that you don't want to do. And actions are hard. That's why I want to get you in these habits of, of focus and putting your energy and focus onto something. Be intentional with what you're doing. Because if you sit back and do nothing, nothing will change. You can buy all the tools in the world. You can buy all the tech tools, all the scheduling tools, all the animation tools, all the tools that are out there, and there's tons. I often hear, they just don't work for me. That CRM didn't work for me. You know, that task automation didn't work for me. That email generator didn't work for me. Did you change yourself? Did you change the way you viewed, viewed that? You also have to be changing yourself. You're one of the tools. Change happens when you change. You want to see something different? Do something different. You want to be something different? Then be something different. You want to see yourself a month from now? What's it going to take to get there a month from now? What sacrifices, what actions will it take? In the entrepreneur world, we all have made tremendous sacrifices to get to where we are now. And we're grateful for that. Every step, every lesson that we've learned in our past has got us here today. Celebrate that. We keep looking forward. So are you moving closer to those goals? And what was the impact that each action that you're taking have? The actions that you wrote down, have you been able to make changes on them? Are you able to innovate? Are you able to maybe think outside the box? Maybe you created an action and you put your focus on it and it needs tweaking. Redefine the objective and even overhaul your action plan if you need to, if you have come to a point that you don't think you can go any further because that goal or that objective has changed. Redefine the action. Put an action in place that will help guide you forward. The power of these actions is about creating feedback and the power of collecting the data and doing the task is to get the feedback on what this action is doing. How are you getting closer to your goal? What's working and what's not? When you sit down and readily assess your effectiveness, then you can adjust your focus based on the feedback that you're seeing. You can put more energy in this place. If you have path A and path B, and path A is getting you what you think is the shortest, most direct path on your entrepreneur, leadership, personal, professional growth journey, and you're on path A, and you're taking all the actions, and it seems to be taking longer, although your path shows it's taking, should take you less time, don't forget about path B and C and D and E. And friends, this is not a mindset thing. You do not have a plan B, C, and D because you believe plan A will fail. You have path B, C, D, and E, because you believe that the things that you're working on on plan A might just get so big that you need another plan to help you get there. Your mindset, your confidence, not cockiness, your confidence is telling you that you believe in yourself and you're betting yourself that plan A is the shortest route to get you to where you need to be, to reach the goals that you want to be, to go from here to there in X amount of time. Plan B might have looked a little bit longer. But maybe plan A, a roadblock drops in. Did your actions and focus prepare for that? Shift your focus to go over to path B. Might take a little bit longer, but you're going to get there because you're putting in the time. And this way you're adjusting and changing. You're being flexible. And you have to be willing to change your plans based on what is and is not working. Setting up those alternative plans is just a way to leverage action to get you to where you want to go. And if you put those plans in place now and you have a starting point where you know these are not just a backup plan, but they're part of the strategic approach 
to achieving your goals. Because considering different scenarios and potential outcomes, you will quickly be able to pivot and not lose your momentum and your time that you've put in to reaching your goal. Maybe you said in 60 days, I want to make an additional $10,000. In 30 days, I'm going to start hiring an office manager. In three months, we are going to raise our prices. Things are going to come along. Keep your energy and your focus on these actions. Commit to making them work. But if something is going awry or you don't feel right about it or you're not seeing the results that you feel your time and attention energy has put into it, I want you to go to your alternative plan. Go to plan B. This will reduce frustrations because when they're in place and if something doesn't go as expected, instead of scrambling for a solution, you can switch to the alternate strategy that you've already have a basic outline for. The episode we talked about, the episode I talked about, if you stay ready, you never have to be ready. Well, this is where readiness can significantly reduce stress and increase you and your team's confidence in the project's success. Whatever it is you're working on, whatever timeline you gave yourself to achieve something, either solo or with your team, when you have an additional plan in place, not just because something's going to fail, friends, but because you're smart enough You're business savvy enough to know, even in life, you need a plan B. It has nothing to do with your mindset because you, my friends, have a champion mindset. So when you integrate these principles into your focus action cycle, you're ensuring that your efforts are not just disciplined and well-directed, but also adaptable and responsive to the real challenges and opportunities that you're going to encounter. Now, you might think this is a holistic approach, but it doesn't It doesn't just maximize your efficiency, but it enhances your effectiveness. It will drive you closer to your goals with each deliberate step. Now let's talk about navigating the focus action loop. Achieving that balance between focus strategy and flexible execution is key to maintaining productivity and driving growth. As we dive into some strategies for maintaining this balance, I want to ensure you that your focus is sharp and adaptable, and that your actions, again, are intentional, purposeful, and responsive. Maintaining the balance in this focus action loop is a continual process of planning. It's a continual process of looking what works, collecting data, watching your progress on paper, however you're keeping track of it, doing those check marks where you are reviewing it and seeing and being excited about the results. Because when you start being focused, and you have intentional, inspirational actions in place, you will start seeing results. You're going to see your growth. And remember, that growth might come into that it might come into you as a roadblock, as something that jumped into your timeline or something that fell right in front of you. But because you've been working and have your energy and focus, even when that little roadblock comes into play, you know that you have plan B, C, or D, or you're going to just plow right through that roadblock Because you are setting yourself up for success. You're believing in yourself and you know you're putting your energy and your time into these actions. So you're going to be able to have this loop, this focus action loop, continually going around the circle, not wildly, but for every action that you take, every focus that you have, they will work together. They go hand in hand. And when you align your focus with flexibility, you're going to have a clear focus. You have to remember that you can't be so strict and so hard on yourself. You have, that's detrimental to anything, my friends. It's almost as, as detrimental as when you have no focus at all. So ensure that your focus will adapt to changing circumstances. This means, as always, part of the FABO mantra, open to new opportunities, open to new information, open to feedback. And open to the dynamics of your environment, your landscape, what industry you're in, what's your landscape look like, what's your career look like, what else is going on in that industry. Align your focus with flexibility because you don't have to give up on something. You're just going to start being able to see how another action can get you from here to there, can move you from point A to point B because you're starting to really focus intentionally. You're having intentional actions. You're putting things in place that will have the needle moving 
in your business and your life. Responsive actions. These are ones that should not only follow a planned path, but also respond to unexpected changes and challenges. Again, this dynamic approach allows you to capitalize on opportunities and migrate risk when they arrive, when they arise. So that little roadblock or that little pothole on your path, you hit it, you bump it, you're going to be better equipped because you have responses for it. You have an action that's going to help you fix that roadblock, move around that blow rock, roadblock. Now, it might delay you in your timeline, but you're better equipped because, again, your energy and your focus, you've thought this through. You're intentional. And you're believing that you're going to make this happen. And then hold strategy sessions with yourself or your team so that you can review the outcomes of your actions and the relevance of your focus. This is where you can really adjust your strategies to better align with your goals. Practical advice. Keeping the focus action loop dynamic and productive to keep your focus and your action as dynamic and productive singly as they are together. Practical advice. Foster a team environment. You've heard this before. You know, gather gather your team around you that's going to lift you up, that's going to elevate you, like-minded people. But then also, if you're a team leader or in a team role, foster a team environment where you encourage an atmosphere where your team members understand that you're all committed, that you are just not having, that you're not leading from the front and not bringing anybody along, but you're leading from the back pushing, encouraging, empowering them to reach the goals that you want to go. Your sleeves are rolled up and you're working because people follow leaders that they believe in and they trust. People follow leaders that are as aspirational and inspirational and as motivated as the team members are to making a project happen, to making a goal get reached. Share this understanding. When you share this understanding, it is crucial for that cohesive action and that cohesive focus. It also ensures that everyone is prepared for changes, adaptions, that little roadblock that comes in. Working together as a team, leading as a team. And if you're solo and by yourself, do not forget that you're a team leader. You're your team leader. You might have to encourage yourself a little harder. You might have to inspire yourself a little harder. You might have to motivate yourself a little harder, but you are the leader of your own team. Talk about the reality of a potential failure. If you've been in business, if you've owned a business, if your name's on the door, if you're writing paychecks, if you're a woman in sports in any way, if you're an athlete, if you're a leader, whatever it is, whoever you are, whatever you do on the daily, failure happens. Fail fast, fail often, fail first. Fail first, fail often, fail fast. Failure is going to happen. The, the openness to not only prepare yourself and your team for the unexpected, you have to let them know we're going at this as a team. There's going to be stumbles, but we're going to help each other get back up. The only failure here is if you stop putting energy in your action and if you quit being focused on your goal. You're developing a resilient mindset. You've been working on this for as long as you've been listening to me and hearing me speak or Part of my coaching, you know that you are developing a resilient mindset. Every action you take, every focus goal that you reach, every focus action that you are on and taken and have accomplished, you have developed that resilient mindset. Simply understanding and accepting that failure as part of the growth process will lead you to more innovative solutions and contingency planning. And it will help you get from here to there, my friends. You can't succeed without failure. You can't be happy without some sad. You can't see the good without the bad. Failure is going to happen. It's powerful. You can be motivated by failure and fear. You can be motivated by success. The choice is yours. And it's probably a combination of both. Contingency planning. Develop that robust, robust consistency plans that can be activated if the initial plan you're going on, if the initial route you're on isn't giving you the desired results, we talked about this, having that extra plan. They're detailed and ready to go. Practical advice. Have something as a backup plan. 
not because you're not going to succeed. I'm going to keep reiterating that. But because you're going to succeed and you want to go maybe faster, maybe quicker, or along the way, you change your mind for that desired result. That desired goal has changed. So contingency plan is, oh my gosh, I'm still working on this. I still have this one. Let's go back to it. Let's start here where we are. And then you're maintaining your momentum. And keep increasing that resiliency. When you foster a culture of learning and adaptation, not only do you encourage resilience, but your team members also learn it. Because, my friends, your comeback is far greater than your setback. And these are just lessons that strengthen future strategies. These are just practical advice. And for those of you that are leading a team, I want you to encourage anatomy to make decisions within their scope. This will empower your team to take swift action when needed, keeping the focus action loop agile and effective. Let them know that they have the power and the autonomy to make a decision for the greater good. And you also need to give them the understanding that if it doesn't work when you make this decision, when you when you when you have the autonomy to make decisions within the scope of what you know how to do, what you believe in, and it doesn't work, the team will get together, refocus our energy, and come up with another action plan to keep us moving forward. Trust the people, trust the process, trust your people and your team with the process. You're leading them. You're leading by example. Be the example that you understand and have come from failure and that you got back up. Be that inspirational, transformational leader. And do the same for yourself, friends. When you integrate these strategies, you can ensure that your focus action loop is not only maintained, but thrives. The balanced approach leads to sustained productivity, will foster more innovation, and ultimately drive success in any competitive environment. Now, we have to talk a little bit about the mental ab- attitude and overcoming your limitations. It is critical role, and the critical role of mental attitude. If you are an entrepreneur, if you are a leader, if you are a woman in sports, again, who, anyone, maintaining your mental health and your mental attitude is key. And maintaining focus and action in your mental attitude will help you overcome your limitations. Your mental state can either drive you forward or can hold you back. Depending on your mindset and ability to overcome limited beliefs, how many times have you heard me say, and I will go to my grave saying, stop listening to the negative noise in your head. Everybody is coming at you. The world that we live in is full of negativity and noise. People, people you don't even know are already telling you, you can't do this. You're not worthy of it. Don't be one of those people having that conversation with yourself. Stop listening to the falseness in your head. Flip that conversation to the positive and impact that you are making. No one needs to see everything that you're doing, friends, for you to feel successful and to know you're successful. You know it. You do not need anyone's approval for your action plan, where your focus is, how you define success. I never want you to quit. I never want you to give up, especially because somebody's telling you that you can't do it, you're not worthy, and you don't deserve it. Stop having the conversations. Remove the limiting beliefs. And for many of you, it comes a lot of baggage. I'm here to help you work on that. We want to explore effective strategies for developing mental resilience and maintaining motivation throughout your professional, personal journey. The focus and the action that you have, put the focus and the energy on moving forward and the impact that you're going to make, sharing your gifts, because you cannot hold your gifts back. No matter how many times you have a conversation with yourself, your gifts will shine through. They were given to you to share and to serve. They make up a huge part of who you are. Get out of your own way. Don't be the roadblock on this path. You're doing all this work to put your energy and your focus and your actions in place. Don't be the roadblock. I want you to cultivate a strong mental attitude. It is the fuel that keeps the engine of focus and action running smoothly. Overcoming mental blocks and reframing challenges are key in sustaining this drive 
to go from here to there to get the transformation that some of you are looking at. And again, you're defining transformation here. I'm hoping this episode today and the conversation I'm having with you is helping you regardless of the transformation you're seeking. Where you want to go from A to B, whatever it is, I want you to understand cultivating that strong mental attitude is key to getting you to where you want to go. Identify and challenge those deep-seated beliefs that are limiting your potential. Again, unpack the baggage. Whether it's fear of failure or that self-imposed barrier that you put on yourself, recognizing that these beliefs and getting rid of these beliefs are the first steps towards dismantling them. You are worthy. You are here. You are fabo. You know that you're going to be able to achieve what you put your energy on. Keep embracing challenges and oppor- as opportunities. With every setback, everyone, with everything, whatever gets in your way, take that challenge and know you're going to learn from it. Know you're going to grow from it. If somebody says you can't, what's the, what's the phrase? Take a picture and show them, <laughs> right? Don't do something to get somebody else's praise. Do what you want to do for yourself. And this transformation, going from part A or point A to point B, make the transformation for you, not because somebody's telling you. Now, if this is a health situation and your doctors are saying you need to do X, Y, Z, I'm not a doctor, friend. Don't have MD behind my name. So listen to those authorities. Listen to those people when it comes to a health situation. When it comes to your mental and your mindset, I'm here to challenge you and push you on it. Because you, my friends, are exactly where you're supposed to be, doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Because what is yours is yours. And what is coming for you is coming from you. You're focused. You have your energy. And you have actions. You're going to get there. It doesn't matter how fast or how soon. You're going to get where you need to go. And right now, where you are is where you need to be. Resilience is built through experience. Both success and setbacks are just part of the growth journey. Each provide valuable lessons that will strengthen our resolve and enhance the, our capacity to deal with future challenges and setbacks. Some additional steps that will help you with your mental resilience and maintain motivation. These are things that will help nurture that robust mental attitude where you can overcome your limitations. But when you consider, and I challenge you, and I encourage you to implement some of these steps. Embrace process over outcome. Shift your focus from that end result. We worked on it at the beginning. This is the desired project. This is the desired goal. This is the desired objective I want. Now, we want to shift from that big picture and we want to work on the small steps to get there. Remember, we're going to reverse engineer it. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to be doing. This is my goal. Whatever time frame you gave yourself. This is the result I want. What actions do I need to take? Where do I need to get my focus? We're now going to come back and embrace the process over the outcome. This approach will alleviate that pressure of getting it all done at one time. It also really helps with your innovative mindset. It gives you a flexible mindset because you have both of those. And when you appreciate the process and you trust the process, you're going to become more adaptable and less attracted to that one outcome. I want your energy to go and your focus to go on the actions that you're taking. We know the ultimate goal. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that if you don't get there in five steps and seven actions in one month, don't put the pressure on yourself. Trust the process. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to have roadblocks, but you're going to have success along the way. And you're going to check off that list. This action did this. This action did this. Look at me going down my checklist. I focused. I put my energy here. I'm seeing the results from my actions. Appreciate the process. It will lead to greater achievements in the long run. You're already learning. Every single day you're trying something new. You're taking risk. That's that learning mindset. You trust each and every action as a learning opportunity. Your mindset, your learning mindset will reduce the fear of failure that we've been working on for any time you've been listening to me. You're going to frame mistakes as part of the learning process. You're going to celebrate 
that you had that opportunity. You're going to celebrate that you had that challenge. You're going to celebrate that you had that roadblock because you're going to celebrate the process that you took the action and you put your energy and your focus into getting around them. You're going to encourage yourself and your team to reflect on what ex experience has taught you and how it's going to shape better strategies moving forward. Overthinking and overwhelm will always lead to paralysis analysis. So we're breaking down these larger actions into smaller steps, friends. But the key is you have to start. You have to take the first step to making the transformation. You have to make the process easier for you, less daunting. So if you want to transform, again, however you are transformation you're looking for, you start small, but you have to start. This approach will not only help you with more complex actions or maybe your project or your desired outcome is pretty big and bold, but it also will give you frequent moments of accomplishment that will boost your morale and motivation. It's great to be bold. It's great to have lofty goals. Go for it. Take the risk. Just start and don't stop moving. This mental attitude that you'll learn to embrace your challenges and that you're focused on continuous learning and that you're taking action to empower yourself to overcome that negative Nancy in your head is going to move you forward. Your mindset, your motivation is going to give you momentum, your focus, your energy, taking actions. These strategies will help you achieve success. About building resilient, this resilient mindset, my friends, is all about achieving success. It's about building and keeping that resilient mindset front and center because it's going to be there. It's going to always be the backdrop of everything that you're working on. Mindset matters. It is at the core. Mindset and confidence, two tools in the toolbox you need to get out frequently. Focus and action are the other two. So as a wrap up, I know I kept a little bit long today, but again, thank you for sharing the space with me. Thank you for being in the earbuds with me. Thanks for sharing this time with me. Remember that focus and action are your pathways to success. And when they're aligned and attuned and you're open to the feedback and you're open to trust in the process, you're going to see transformation. By understanding and implementing the focus action strategy, you will enhance your performance, you'll lead yourself and your teams more effectively, and you're going to achieve the outcomes you desire and friends, dare I say, even bigger outcomes than you desired. The key is to start, no matter how small, and keep learning and shifting as you go. Focus and action. Focus on where you want to go, take action to get there, and use some of these steps along the way as a dynamic duo that they are. I believe in you. I know you believe in yourself. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate you allowing me to come into you, your earbuds. And I hope that I'm empowered, empowering you and encouraging you to embrace what makes you fabulous because, my friends, you are. So I have a reminder and an ask. If you are finding value from the show and want more insights on transforming your mindset, your confidence, and staying motivated to reach and exceed your goals through effective strategies like this episode and others, Make sure that you subscribe to the Be Fabble podcast and make sure that you sign up for the monthly, my Fabble monthly ish newsletter. Currently dropping your email, but coming soon to your buds because you all know that the writing for me is almost impossible, but it's not impossible because I have the mindset and the confidence to do my best. My learning disability, my speech impediment, I work on it daily for you because you empower and you encourage me because I want to keep coming and doing this. I want to keep leaning into this calling to share my experiences and my stories and that I can overcome certain things. Your grace with my speed, your grace with my cadence, your grace with my sometimes saying words wrong <laughs> is much appreciated. So if you're looking for professional and personal growth support, that's what's here in this community. That's what I want to be for you. So if you know somebody that's looking for that, please, that's my ask. Please just share with them so we can welcome them into the community and we can keep doing what we want to do here. And I can keep bringing you these episodes. As I mentioned, I'm going to get ready to bring on some 
excited about some new guests coming on once I hit the 100 episode here coming up. I'm excited about some new people coming and sharing their stories on mindset, what keeps them going. But as always, my friends, thank you for sharing space with me. I look forward to the next time that that we get to share the space together as we continue to explore empowering tools and stories to help you build a thriving business and a purposeful life. Because my friends, when you are doing what you love, it should bring you profit, purpose, and joy. Till next time, my friends, stay fabulous.